Yeah, hello everybody, welcome back to the Northern Forge. Today I'm going to be making some log tongs or drag tongs. Um, I've got a couple of trees that have fallen down in the slough behind my house and the ducks unfortunately are getting caught on the wrong side and they're blocking me from getting the ducks back in with the kayak so got to get those out so I'm gonna go ahead and make some log tongs today. I've got two pieces of inch and a quarter round about six and a half inches long. These just came out of my scrap bucket. I believe they were originally uh, some sort of hydraulic pin or part of a hydraulic shaft maybe, but um, need some, some hard steel and I don't have any spring steel quite thick enough to do this. So we're gonna try these out. I want these to be nice and beefy. We're gonna hook these up to the back of my tractor and try and drag some logs out of the water. So without further ado, I'm gonna get these in the fire. We're gonna get them hot and start forging some log tongs. I'll start by using the power hammer to square up both of these round billets that I'm starting out with. Once I have both billets square, I'm going to flatten them out into a bar that's about a half an inch thick. And once I have a flat bar on both of them, I'm going to start forging down one end to roughly half inch thick square. And this is what's going to form the jaws of the tongs.
once the jaw end is forged, I'll need to forge a second narrow section between the boss and the hole at the end where the rope or chain can be attached uh, for pulling on these tongs. This rear narrow section will be forged all the way to round. Then once I have that rounded up, I'm going to switch back around to the jaw end and ensure that everything is forged around there as well. Then using the power hammer, forge in a rough point. Uh, this tip needs to be durable enough that it's going to be able to pull logs that might weigh a couple hundred pounds, but it also needs to be sharp enough so that it's easily going to stab into the log. Next, I'll head back over to the anvil so I can finish up forging those tips by hand. Once the tips are forged to a point, I'm going to go and bend the end of the jaws over. I could wait until the end to do this, but I chose to forge this in now. That way it'll be easier to make sure that I can keep both sides of the tongs the exact same length all the way to the end of the process. Now that I have the end of the jaws forged to shape, I have more material in the boss than what I need. So I'm going to go back over to the power hammer for a bit and take some more material from the boss, forge it down so that it can make those jaws a bit longer. And the next step here is going to be punching the holes, but before I go and punch the holes, I'm going to go over to the edge of the anvil and use some angled blows just to round out the corners of that square end. Since I want to preserve as much material thickness as I can on this end, I'm going to be punching it with a slot punch. As usual, I'll punch about halfway through one side of the material, and then I'll flip it over and finish punching from the other side.
Once I have the slot punched, I'll use a large drift to drift the hole from that narrow rectangle out to a round hole. And once I have the hole drifted round, I can use the horn of the anvil to even up the thickness around the circle and I want to round out the edges so that they don't dig into any uh, rope or any other material that I may put through here for pulling with. Now that the ends are forged, it's time to punch in the rivet hole in the boss. To save material, like I did on the end, I'll be using an undersized punch, then drifting the hole to size. In this case, I'm using my handled punch from my Hammer Eye punch video, uh, since the end of it's about a quarter inch, and then I'll be drifting the hole up to about half inch.
Now that the hole is punched, I'm going to prepare the rivet using a technique that you should be familiar with from my other videos, particularly my tong videos. I'll use my hot cut to cut the rivet off of the stock about 95% of the way. That way I can use the rest of the bar as a handle when I put it back in the forge. Then I'll break it off like you see me doing here uh, once I put it in and I'm ready to start peening over the rivet. I'm going to take a couple of heats here to loosen up the boss so that these tongs will pivot smoothly. I probably could have made this step a bit easier if I'd used my grinder to flatten and smooth out the section of the boss where they're going to rub on each other before riveting it together, but I didn't think it was going to be this big of an issue until after I already had the rivet installed on this one, so I'm just going to take a few extra minutes to get things loosened up. And now that I have the tongs loosened up, I just need to let them cool down and they will be ready for use. Thanks for watching everybody. Please like the video if you enjoyed, subscribe to see more, and leave a comment with your suggestions on what you think I should make next.